Once in a while, I like to try new ways of blending colored pencils. So I'm going to show you some new ways you can blend your colored pencils using a marker blender and a blending stick that adds gloss and UV protection. I'm actually thinking of using these myself for my artwork because they have some nice effects. First, I'm going to go over the features of the marker blender and blending sticks, and then I'll show you how they blend with colored pencils. The Marker Blender is a Prismacolor Premier Alcohol Colorless Blender. It has two ends you can use, one that is slender that you can use for smaller areas to blend and a larger end that works great for blending a wider area. The caps required a little force to pull off but was not a struggle at all. I got this Marker Blender on Amazon for about $6 which I have a link to in the video description if you want to check that out. Next is the Caran d'Ache Full Blender Sticks. It comes in a hexagonal shape that makes them easier to grip for blending. The whole thing is actually the blending material and feels like just a regular wooden pencil. To use it, you just pop the end into a sharpener and sharpen to your desired sharpness. I bought these blending sticks on Amazon for about $7. I'll have a link to them in the description as well. Now let's get into blending. I'm going to test these out on Bristol vellum and colored pencil paper. Bristol vellum being a smoother paper and the colored pencil being a medium textured paper. So you can get an idea for how well it blends on different common paper types for colored pencils. I filled in a gradient with a medium layer of colored pencil. I'm gonna start off with the marker blender on Bristol vellum paper. You can see I'm just lightly going over it and doing a little bit of circular motions, doing back and forth, just kind of testing out which way this actually works the best. And from what I've discovered, it, it works the best if you do little circular motions. If you're familiar with blending with solvent, um, you do kind of get a better blend when you do tiny circular motions with your brush and blend that into the paper. So that is the way that this marker works best. I would have to say that it works better with a little bit more colored pencil on the paper. The lighter section of blue, I actually did a little bit of a lighter layer there than I did with the darker blue and the purple. And you can see it, it didn't quite um, blend evenly with that. It, whereas on the darker sections, it did actually kind of blend a little bit better. Now it does kind of stain the marker a bit when you're blending with colored pencils, but I am wiping that off on the side here. And you can actually see that it's cleaning up pretty well. Even though the marker is still stained, it's not transferring any more color to the paper. Now we're gonna move on to the Caran d'Ache blending stick. And um, so this would be the first layer of colored pencil. When I'm testing out different methods of blending, I like to see how it handles multiple layers. So this will be the first layer on Bristol vellum and using both the marker and blending stick and seeing how that turns out. Then I am going to do a second layer over the top and see how well um, the second layer can be applied. So with this blending stick, uh, it's actually blending out really nicely. Um, you, you don't have to push very hard either to get it to blend nicely. Uh, I, I'm pushing a little harder than I think you really need to. Like um, a little bit later, I hold it more gentle to the paper and just graze it over the top and it actually blends really, really nicely. It smooths it out and brings that color out really, really well. The only downside is that it kind of gives off this crumbly, uh, just bits of the blending stick. If you're not careful, you can actually press those down onto your paper and transfer some of the color into it to other areas of your paper. So if you're going to use these blending sticks, which I probably will actually, if do, when you're doing um, smaller or lighter layers, this is actually probably a really good thing to use for blending because it will smooth everything out really nice. But you'll just want to keep it in mind that you need to try and not get these uh, flakies 
all over your drawing or don't put any pressure on them. I use a brush to just brush those off to the side and it did a good job in getting rid of those and not transferring anything to my paper. But on the instances where I accidentally pressed one with my finger, it actually transferred some onto the paper. Now with this blending stick, one thing it says is it gives your artwork a glossy finish as well as UV protection. So I do think that that is kind of convenient with the UV protection. If you are, say, maybe wanting to preserve some of your work without spraying it, this would be a nice additive to use to blend your work with. All right, so I'm going to add the second layer now over the top of both of these, and we're gonna see how well you can add multiple layers to your work if you use these ways of blending. So I'm using a darker color for this so that you can see it better when I go over the lighter sections. I'm starting off with the marker section, and um, I really do feel like this is very, very similar to using solvents to blend with and a paintbrush. It's going, it feels like the same way it goes over the paper when I'm using solvents. I didn't really go over the lighter section there, but you can kind of see where I went over the blue and how well I was able to add that uh, color over there as the second layer. Now I'm going to do the Caran d'Ache stick. You're already noticing that it just doesn't add a second layer as nicely as it did with the marker. So this is one drawback to using the Caran d'Ache sticks for blending, kind of as I said before, that it will work really, really great for doing light layered work. So say you're drawing something that maybe you only need one layer or maybe just two layers and you don't need to add five or six layers on top to get your drawing to be either super dark or other details on top that you may need to add in later. It was just super, super smooth and it wasn't picking up a whole lot of that color as I was adding it over the top. All right, let's move on to that colored pencil paper that has a medium texture. For this one, I'm going to start off with the marker again, and I'm going to use the smaller point to it just to see kind of how that works. Now I'm gonna switch out for the larger end, and I'm really gonna focus on trying to do more circular motions this time, as opposed to kind of how I was going about it with the last one. Um, just that little bit of, uh, you know, experience that I've got now. Whereas before when I first started, I did not know how to get this to blend right. So I'm also doing some back and forth motions and you'll notice that it's actually blending out really, really nice. If anything, I actually feel like it was blending better on the medium paper. And I wonder if that's just because it's got more texture to it instead of being smooth like the vellum. Vellum has a little bit of a texture to it, but of course, medium textured papers have more texture. And I wonder if the smoother textures caused it to smear around more instead of staying put and getting blended into the paper better. It just looks like it got blended into the paper better and easier than it did on the Bristol vellum. And with much less um, having to go back and forth and I didn't apply any extra pressure or anything. I really did it just like I did with that Bristol vellum. It just seems to have done a little bit better on the more textured paper. And then certainly, of course, doing more circular motions or focusing on actually blending a specific section and then moving to the next one helped as well. Now I'm gonna move on to the blending stick by Caran d'Ache for the other strip. So this one, again, I feel like it actually blended out pretty nicely on the medium textured paper. It just took a little bit more work of going back and forth to make sure that it filled in all of those little crevices of the tooth of the paper. So there was a little bit more effort that needed to go through in trying to get that blended out. However, you don't have to press too hard to do this. So it's actually really easy on your hand and it doesn't take very long to blend all of that out either. So how does this marker blender and Caran d'Ache blending stick do with the second layer on this medium paper? 
on the blender marker. It actually went on really, really nice, of course, because this is a, a medium textured paper. So that means that there's more tooth to the paper that is going to pick up the actual colored pencil when you put it to the paper. Based on how it behaves with the Bristol vellum paper, I expect it to behave a little bit better or allow me to add more layers or thicker layers on the medium textured paper because the more texture you have with your paper, the more colored pencil it is going to pick up. And then drawing that over the top of the blending stick section, um, I'm actually able to add a pretty good amount over the top of that. So it just goes to show that it does make a difference with whatever paper you're using, depending on the blending style you use as well. So this uh, blending stick actually worked out pretty nicely for the medium textured paper. It didn't work out so nice for the smoother Bristol vellum paper because there wasn't enough tooth once it filled in all the crevices to still be able to grab that colored pencil when you added a second layer over the top. Whereas using the medium textured paper, there still was some tooth to the paper that allowed you to, or allowed it to pick up the colored pencil with that second layer better than the Bristol vellum. And then of course, the same thing is present with the uh, marker blender, just because it does behave very, very, very similarly to using odorless mineral spirits or solvent using a paintbrush. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this second layer that I applied over the top of that marker blender section because uh, it does behave very similar to odorless mineral spirits. So I particularly like this marker blender. I just wanna see how it behaves with doing a blend of a second layer over the top because I do actually do this a lot with my odorless mineral spirits. I will blend in at least two, maybe three, or sometimes four different layers over the top of what I've blended before. And I do love the fact that with odorless mineral spirits, you can do that so that you can apply your color layers in slower increments if you want to be a little more cautious with adding colors and not making mistakes. So it really just kind of make the drawing process easier. And this blender marker allows you to basically do almost the same thing. The only difference is that I feel like the marker is a little more streaky than it is with odorless mineral spirits and a brush and it's a little harder to try and get a more gentle blend with the marker than you can using a paintbrush. You can actually use the paintbrush and because the, the um, bristles are flexible, it allows it to have contact with the paper in a much softer um, pressure style and smearing around the pigments than you can get with a marker. In order to do that with the marker, it ha actually has to have a more firm contact with the paper. So you're going to end up with a more smeared effect of blending a second layer. So it is kind of something that I think will be a learning curve to try and figure out, but I am interested to see what other kind of effects I could get using the blending marker or some other different styles of drawing that I could do with using the marker instead of, odorless, instead of odorless mineral spirits. You can learn more about different ways of blending with colored pencils from the top right video. You can also learn a lot more to drawing wildlife and pets using colored pencils with my real-time 1-15 to hour voiceover drawing tutorials on Patreon. Sign up and get instant access to a growing library of tutorials and new ones are added each month. A link to my Patreon is in the description. Thanks so much for watching, see you in the next video.